When you're hearing the master plan part four, are you seeing that Optimus could really be 80% of revenue? Well, Optimus is about, you know, creating like humanoid robots that could take billions of jobs uh, on the planet. So as long as you remain vague on timeline and what the scenario looks like, yes, it's very easy to imagine that um, the, uh, the Tesla would be first like uh, uh, expanded in terms of valuation with like a successful robot taxi operation. And then of course, like uh, a fleet of like hundreds of millions of uh, human in robots would dwarf actually the, the economic value of even a, a robot taxi business. So, you have to remember that you know this this plan Tesla publishes and Elon likes to comment on uh, is really like a vision, uh, like a stretch vision. He's always uh, been uh, managing uh, ma managing his businesses, uh, bringing up like his very long term visions, and he has this way of presenting it, presenting these versions very often with like a slightly distorted uh, time uh, time scale. You know when he talks about like uh, Mars and the, the conquest of Mars on the SpaceX and things like that. You, so you have to put the comments in, in, in the right context. So today, uh, we know that the robot taxi business in the most bullish case, which would be uh, Tesla can scale out robot taxis, doesn't really have significant competition, uh, given like the, the, the quality of their cost base, that business would be worth multiple trillions and would be already like a multiple of the existing auto business. Uh, and yes, uh, on, on top of that, uh, a human need robot bull case where Tesla dominates uh, the space again and humanoid robots uh, can take over hundreds of millions of jobs, you, you, you can easily get like, you know, to uh, l like the large number of trillions, like close to $10 trillion dollars of, right. uh, uh, of valuation. Does that mean this is what I have in my model and what you should bang on, uh, bet on today? Maybe not. I spent a lot of time reading the document. Uh, it's like an economic theory, right? They're basically arguing that because Tesla can scale, if they do build all of these things, there will be this sort of great economic impact around the world to people of all class, economic classes. Is that something, Pierre, that as an analyst covering a specific name or specific stock that you kind of model for? You go, OK, in the future, uh, Tesla is going to change the world economy as we know it. Yeah, it's a very good, uh, it's a very good question, Ed. So let's look at, you know, like what is tangible at Tesla today. That's the auto business. And let's look at what good analysts do uh, covering Tesla. You understand Tesla's uh, technological, um, you know, leadership, you know, how early they come into the market with what kind of performance, what kind of features. Uh, and then you measure also the performance of Tesla's uh, cost base, like their cost efficiency. Uh, and so that's what we've done over the last uh, f five years looking at Tesla. And what you've seen is that Tesla came into the market five years ago in large scale um, with really like a cost base that was not, um, uh, that nobody could approach. And also with like a performance, like a, a quality of innovation that uh, nobody could approach. Today, uh, as you see in China, uh, local Chinese competitors are actually capable of being very competitive with Tesla. Uh, in terms of uh, innovation and in terms of cost as well. We've done very detailed analysis of the, the cost of manufacturing a, a car at BYD um, uh, and others versus Tesla. And what you see is that they, they are about uh, on par. So that type of analytical work, you can do it on a business that is actually ramping today. If you look at it like uh, in the longer term, it's more difficult to do. But what you can get from Tesla is this very interesting perspective that by yeah. having a very, very proactive and very integrated model and vision, they can actually hit technological and innovation leadership with by far the most advanced cost base, which is exactly where they are today on the robot taxi front. They have the, the cheapest platform and the platform that today is, you know, right. the jury is still slightly out, but probably like the, the, the highest performing platform as well. And then, of course, Elon's bet is to put Tesla in the same position with a human and robot in two, three years from now. Pierre, you mentioned China several times there. I just want to broaden out, out the conversation briefly. When you're looking at TSMC being limited for what equipment it can get in, you cover KLA, I see. You cover Tokyo Electron. You cover LAM Research. How much are these companies going to be impacted by U.S.-China? Well, they're all going to, uh, you know, be sitting on their hands waiting for like directions of how the negotiation and the relationship between the U.S. and China is going to be um, uh, uh, is going to be handled. Um, 
if you take specifically like semi-cap equipment players, they are generating a lot of their revenues still above 20% of their revenues is coming from China today. And to us, it's an overhang, it's a concern. It's, it's probably coming down, normalizing over time. So we, we see that as a potential you know, headwind on, uh, on their financial performance. But you have to take things back to what they are. It's only 20% of, the, of their business yeah. that's kind of like a peakish um, uh, uh, at a peak. So it's, it's not like a, a game changer for, for them, of course.